Welcome back. It's uh, time to talk. And of course, we have a first major conversation up next right here on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. The Independent National Electoral Commission, the apex body uh, for electoral, election conduct trial in the country, uh, has been saddled with the responsibility of overseeing the electioneering process while ensuring credibility. However, despite efforts uh, of the commission to keep the electoral process as transparent and uh, as credible as possible, there have been widespread reports of electoral malpractice aided by sometimes violence. Uh, therefore, INEC had over the years sought for the deployment of technological innovations to improve the credibility and safety of the electoral process in Nigeria. And uh, in 2015, the commission had deployed the use of smart card readers, if you remember, uh, for the conduct of the elections with four main objectives, to verify the permanent voter cards, the PVCs presented by voters at the polling units, and to ensure that they are genuine. INEC issued cards and not clone cards like some used to do in the past. Now, in recent state elections, INEC has deployed the bimodal voter accreditation, accreditation system, uh, which it says, you know, it will use for the general elections in 2023. It's been relatively successful in the recent state elections so far. But what exactly is the BVAS, the bimodal voter accreditation system, and will it bring about credible elections in Nigeria? I'm glad to see you have joining us again right here on the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa, a senior professor of political science at the Bayero University in Kano, Professor Sani Fage. Uh, Prof, good morning to you. Thank you very much for your time. Good morning and thank you. All right. Um, this Beaver, say it's it's a, it's a new innovation compared uh, to the smart card readers that you know we saw in 2015. I'm sure you remember uh, the little drama that transpired when the former president, the then president, uh, Dr. Goodluck Jonathan, went to his polling uh, a, a booth and could not vote because the smart card couldn't recognize him. Um, looking at this Beaver, you think it's something that um, is a welcome development for INEC? And you expect that it will be an improvement on the smart card readers from what you've observed so far? Yes, I think uh, it is an improvement uh, in the sense that uh, it will take care of the problems that we used to have with the smart card. Um, what it does is that uh, there, there are two processes for you know, verifying the potential voter. One is the stamp print, which uh, when we use it before, like uh, the example we gave about uh, former president, uh, good luck, uh, it may fail. And then the other alternative is to use facial recognition of uh, the, uh, the voter. So I think a combination of that will um, reduce that problem and challenges. And it will also make things easier and faster but this does not mean it is uh, without its own problem but at least i think for now uh, that will be a, a serious impro or great improvement in uh, the process of our elections um we've had state you know elections in in recent times i mean Osho state elections just held where uh, the opposition candidate uh, uh, a delicate one. You had the elections in Anambra State. Um, you've had elections in Ekiti State as well. Um, you've had some senatorial by-elections held holding in some parts of the country. From what you've seen, um, are you are you confident that you know the winner will have it all at the end of the day? That the true winner will emerge, as compared to uh, the times past when we've seen. People complain about you know, electoral malpractices and, of course, people come, coming out and saying, you know, the winner didn't emerge and they were cheated. I mean, even in the same Oshu State, the previous election that brought this governor in, the jury held view by those in Oshu State is that uh, uh, he didn't win that election. Yes, um, winners will emerge, but cheating will not uh, be eliminated 100%. Um, what uh, the process is likely to remove is the issue of multiple voters, whereby you have candidates uh, are given more, uh, a number of voters card and they go and, uh, you know, cast it. That one, I'm sure, through this by model, it will be eliminated. But other process, other malpractices will, will be 
you know, perfected by the desperate uh, uh, candidate. For example, uh, it, uh, this process may, may not eliminate the, the issue of voter buying, which was what happened like uh, in Ekiti, like what happened in uh, Oshun, and in other places. As a matter of fact, it is likely going to raise the issue of voter by buying higher because uh, those desperate uh, politicians who knew very well that they cannot buy, I mean, they cannot use multiple voting, uh, they may decide to raise the stake in terms of buying credible candidates, I mean, potential candidates. So we'll see a retrace of who will out buy the other uh, in, in the process. So I'm not condemning it, but what I'm saying is that unless we take stern measures on, uh, you know, electoral malpractice, no matter the system that we involve or evolve, is like we are likely going to see new forms of um, uh, malpractice. For example, another easy thing that they can do is to intimidate the opposition, where uh, a, a, a strong candidate knows that this section or these particular people are going to vote for another party. They will use facts to intimidate them. So I think unless we back uh, this by model uh, process with strong uh, uh, electoral laws and rules which are there, which we have to impose, then it will work uh, very well. Interesting uh, in point you raised about uh, new methods being uh, that will be adopted by the politicians, like you said, uh, desperate politicians to ensure that they can find them their way to victory. And one you talked about voter buying, the other one you talked about um, voter intimidation. So uh, this is to say, if I re if I'm getting correctly, that uh, they can look at the areas where they feel they don't have a lot of supporters and they may win the elections, and then they go there and try to bribe. Uh, the, the electorate and pay them uh, to to vote for them. That's the first one. Second one is to go and just scuttle elections in areas where they feel they're losing so that those who are not their supporters will run away and then their, their own supporters can vote. Um, how can the, 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 the problem be tackled, this, this issue? Because you talked about having strict you know, rules and strict laws to, to nip this in the bud apart from the beavers. You've also said that the beavers hold and multiple voting, but it won't stop, you know, underhand tactics. So let's look at voter buying. Um, we've seen the videos, you know, uh, you know, uh, user-generated content in Oshun State. We saw some in Anambra State. What can be done to stop voter buying in Nigeria or vote buying in Nigeria? You see, a lot of things have to be done. First and foremost, uh, we have to educate uh, the, the electorate or on their right and the uh, consequences and implication of selling their vote. Uh, they have to buy that one because no matter what you do, if uh, the, the people are so desperate and they think uh, all that they will get from the system is the steepen that will be given to them by the politician, they, they, they will go ahead and do it. So that is one thing. The second thing is we have to look at other clients where elections are not do or die affairs. And what makes it so is that uh, we, we demonetize, uh, you know, uh, politics because we make it in such a way that whoever wins will have, you know, like a booty. Everything, every resources of uh, the, the, the policy will be at its own disposal. So we have to have that one. And the third layer, which is most important, is that we, we, we have to back all these laws by action. You see, sometimes when things are perpetrated like that, the law tends to stop at, uh, you know, the, the, the people and, and the box. They, there is no attempt to punish those who are behind uh, the, the, uh, the malpractice. In other words, when you see somebody trying to buy, an agent trying to buy uh, a, a boat or boater, that agent is not doing for himself or herself. There is somebody who is financing him for that. So unless we punish uh, the ones behind it and uh, make it a rule of law, that is why the system, that is when the system will work.
Interesting. W what about voter intimidation? Um, how can this be tackled? Um, you know, uh, do you, are you looking at the security? Are you looking at maybe more laws, stronger laws coming into place? Or probably INEC also doing something to ensure that uh, we have fewer incidents of violence and voter intimidation? You see, sometimes uh, this voter intimidation uh, takes place with the connivance of the security agencies uh, in the spot. You know, some people uh, are bought and uh, they turn their head, uh, uh, you know, the other direction. And sometimes the security agents feel like they are working for the government of the day. So they will now support uh, the candidate of uh, the ruling party and uh, allow all these processes to take place. So I think the major thing is that uh, we, we have to emphasize this issue of fairness and uh, of, of, of the laws. Unless we impose the laws, you know, uh, no matter uh, who was in, who is involved, that is when we can do it. Take, for example, what happened uh, even in the process of uh, uh, voter registration that has not been concluded. The reports have is that in Lagos, uh, some areas where people knew that they are likely going to vote uh, for another party, were intimidated, they were denied, they were scared into coming out to register. So you see, unless you have, uh, you know, an independent uh, security agency, I don't, I'm not saying new, but uh, you have to educate the security agencies to know that they are not subject only to the government of the day or the stronger parties, but they are Nigerian security agencies and then we, we also emphasize the fact that whoever is involved in that term will be dealt according to the law. I mean, will be dealt with according to the, the laws of the land. And at the same time, we also deal with the thugs and those behind them. So unless we have uh, that uh, rule of law, uh, we, we may invent so many things and the politicians could easily sit down and get uh, loopholes how they will be to the system. All right. Um, INEC has advocated, and we had some time ago, uh, Fessus Okoye, the National Chairman of Information and Voter Education, right here on the, on the breakfast. He, he said that INEC is advocating for uh, a separate uh, commission or body to face electoral offenses, that INEC is, uh, is saddled with so much that they can't face that uh, you know that though they have a legal department but it's a lot to look at that it takes a lot of their resources and their time uh do you support such a view do you think that um if this uh, is implemented like INEC is asking for a separate body called electoral offenses commission for instance to squarely deal with electoral offenses that will give INEC the uh the freedom to focus on uh, organizing elections and then this commission will be able to tackle and address the issue of electoral offenses squarely thereby reducing it. Yes, I'm in support of that. Uh, in fact, you see, Annette's hands are tied. It's just literally like somebody, you tie his hand backwards and also his feet and push him into the river and say, let him swim. And that is what is happening to Annette. Annette has come up with so many things, but it doesn't have the power and whether we sell to punish uh, electoral uh, offenses, or let's say even investigate and then take appropriate measures. It doesn't happen. So the best thing is we should have an independent body that will do uh, these issues. And maybe if we are talking of cost, we can have it on an uh, ad hoc basis. Like when there is election, you have an electoral uh, court, if we can call it, which will now dispense with issues like that. And after uh, the, the, the exercise, you, you allow it. We have so many credible uh, judges which we can bring into, and lawyers which we can bring into the process. So I think if we are to allow it to be a permanent thing, like what is the usual practice in Nigeria, we are going to create a necessary bureaucracy which will consume a lot of money, which uh, will now deviate from the fact that elections are only means to good governance, not an end to themselves. So if we have it on permanent basis, that is what is going to happen. And secondly, if we have it on permanent basis, we are going to raise the issue of corruption. 
because the politicians will know who is who in the uh, electoral court. And uh, before the elections or after the election or during the election, they will do all their best to, uh, you know, buy uh, those ones. But so if it is unknown, it is something that, let's say, we allow it within the judiciary and that uh, the office is there, it, it will be manned by people, uh, qualified ones, uh, during the elections. All right. Uh, the Nigerian federal government under the then president, uh, Muhammad, um, Umar Musa Yardua, in 2007, uh, constituted an electoral uh, reform committee spearheaded by the former chief justice of Nigeria, Mohamed Owais, called the Owais Panel Owais Committee, which uh, was composed of highly intellectual and erudite, you know, uh, brains and, and individuals, you know, from the academic, civil society organizations, professional groups and public service you know, to come up with reforms for Nigeria's um, electoral, uh, um, for elections in the country. And this report, uh, the report of the committee, the West Committee, has not been implemented. Um, it recommended, uh, Prof, among other things, the constitutional amendments to insulate INEC from uh, political influences of the executive arm of government in terms of its composition and funding. Talked about the functions of the police. You, you, have, you have pointed out that the police and the security agencies are part of the problem as far as uh, voter intimidation is concerned. It talked about the function of the police uh, on election duty and stated that the uh, the functions of the police in the police service commission guidelines on code of conduct of officers should be incorporated into police act. It's quite comprehensive. These are, are just summaries. He also talked about election petitions and, and all that. Looking at such a, a, a committee report, even talking about increasing the number of tribunals uh, you know, in the country, do you think that this report, uh, uh, the report by the West Committee, if it, it had been fully implemented, would have made us better off as far as uh, credible elections in the country are concerned. Yes, I, um, I, I agree with that because that, that is what uh, I'm trying to say that what you need is uh, the, the laws that are there. Already you see one of our major problem in Nigeria is that we tend to set committees uh, and uh, at the end of it we make it just a window dressing. They will do a fine job like what the West Committee did. And uh, we just keep it aside. We don't try to implement uh, the committees. And next time, you see that they will rush and come and set up another new committee. And we should not go, we should not do even anything better than what uh, the West Committee did. So had it been President M. Adua was alive to see to the implementation of that a report. I'm sure we could have been far better off ahead than where we are now in terms of our uh, election management. Okay, so that will have been a very good thing to do. And uh, from the beginning, even what set the standard was when Er Adua admitted uh, that he was elected, uh, you know, uh, on uh, you know with uh, electoral problems. And so he admitted that one, and he set up a very powerful committee, which did a, a beautiful job. But now we are, it is there lying on the shelf. Okay. So I think, uh, yes, I agree that had it been that West Committee has been implemented, all these issues that we are discussing now will have been a history of the past. Interesting indeed. One wonders why such reports are left on the shelf, like you said, uh, to gather dust in, in, in the government house at Rock Villa. Only time will tell if it will be implemented. But uh, Professor Sanifage, thank you very much uh, for your time. I think you've said it on summary that the BVAS alone will not uh, uh, bring about credible elections. The other things that have to be looked at, we appreciate your time. Thank you very much. All right. uh, Professor Sanifage is a senior lecturer in political science at the Osman Danfuru University, senior professor rather in political science at the Osman Danfuru University uh, Kano. It's still the breakfast. We'll be right back when we return. We look at uh, uh, an incident, uh, unprofessional conduct by some police officers, and the Osho State Commissioner of Police has uh, disbanded the tactical squad as a result of that. We'll be right back after this break.